Today I'm going to see if Poisson's spot still forms with the darkest ball in the world, painted with Musso black. Then I'll see if we can use the properties of light to make an anti-Poisson spot, called the dark Poisson spot. In my last video I showed an interesting phenomenon that happens when you shine coherent light like a laser on a steel ball. The part of the shadow of the ball that you'd assume would be the darkest, right in the middle, is actually the brightest spot. A lot of people misunderstood how this spot forms and assumed it happens because the ball is shiny. In fact, anytime I've shown diffraction patterns, many people assume it's because the object is shiny, that the light's able to bend around the edges. So today I'm going to be trying it with a ball that absorbs over 99.4% of the light that hits it, to be certain that no reflections are causing the bright spot. In addition to the sphere, I'm also going to be using my new Creality K2 Plus printer that I'll tell you about later in the video to make two shapes that should show Poisson's spot as well. This is a regular disc that should make Poisson's spot just like the sphere. But this is a special spiral shaped disc that I made. According to a research paper I read, this shape should make the light gain orbital angular momentum that will result in a dark Poisson spot in the shadow. Basically a Poisson spot with a dark hole in the middle. So this is the paint I'm using. It absorbs 99.4% of visible light. So it'll be shiny at first while it's drying and then it'll reach a deep dark black mat. Okay, here we go. Let's try it with a Musso black ball. So again, the setup is just having a laser light that gets spread out by a lens here. And then I let the light hit the ball right here and make a shadow on the back there. And what do we see? Right in the middle is Poisson's spot. So the spot shows up even when the ball is not reflective at all. So it has nothing to do with the shininess of the ball. Now let's check if a disc works instead of a sphere. Wow, this actually shows up better than the sphere. The disc works really well, so you don't need a sphere at all. You just need a symmetrical shape like a circle. So it shows up whether or not the ball or disc is shiny or reflective. So how is this working then? Well, as Fresnel predicted, most of the time light behaves like a wave. The Huygens-Fresnel principle tells us that these wave fronts are a sum of many spherical wavelets. You can see what I mean if I simulate a row of point sources emitting spherical waves. These waves combine to form a wave plane front. What this means is that if you were to suddenly block this plane wave, then right at the edges you actually have a spherical wave. And if the object is small enough, light just bends around it almost as if it's not there. But with a larger symmetrical object, a curious effect happens. In most areas far from the edges, the waves destructively interfere, creating darkness. But at the center, the light waves constructively interfere, creating a bright spot. This demonstration was the final nail in the coffin for the corpuscle theory of light. And from then on, people began to think of light as waves. It's weird enough that we can get a bright spot in the center of a shadow, but there's actually an obscure experiment I read in a research paper that talked about something called a dark Poisson spot. Dark Poisson spots result when the light hitting the backstop is spiralized, meaning it has orbital angular momentum. Light can have spin angular momentum, or SAM. This means that if it hits a particle, it'll cause that particle to rotate around its own center. But light can also have orbital angular momentum, meaning that if it hits a particle, it'll cause the particle to rotate about the light's axis. This orbital angular momentum is what's needed to make the dark Poisson spot. When OAM light hits a backstop, the center of the light beam will actually be dark. This is because right in the center of the spiralized wave, the electromagnetic field isn't varying. So that means that there's no visible light there. In order to make light that has orbital angular momentum, it's actually not very hard. And it seems too trivial that this should work, but it does. What you need is just to shine coherent light on a disc that's spiral shaped. So I 3D printed this tiny spiral shape here. And what happens is when the light hits this shape, it makes the light have a non-uniform phase distribution that varies around a circle. So in essence, it spiralizes the light that hits it. <laughs> Look how cool that is. A dark spot right in the middle. Instead of a bright spot right in the middle, you get a brighter spot with a dark spot right in the center. 
So that light hitting the center is actually spiralized light that has orbital angular momentum. Researchers have actually used this light to make particles start orbiting when they shine this light on it. Now you might think that the making of Poisson's spot is limited to light, since light acts like a wave most of the time. But if you remember your quantum mechanics, you'll know that it's not just light that acts like waves, but everything acts like waves in between measurements. So that means that if I shot a bunch of molecules at a ball or disc, then the spot that gets hit the most would be directly behind the disc. And if you don't believe me, scientists have actually shot deuterium molecules at a disc. Deuterium is just a hydrogen molecule where each hydrogen atom has an extra neutron. These molecules actually made a Poisson spot on the backstop. So this is the actual image with the count rate of the deuterium molecules hitting the back. The center of the image has the most counts of the shadow. This blows my mind. Sometimes quantum mechanics seems fake, but then experiments like this come along and show us, oh yeah, this matter and molecules that you're made of can actually act like a wave, just like light, diffracting and bending. So if you want to try this experiment for yourself, I'll put the link to the STL file for the little disk and spiral disk that I made, so you can make Poisson spot and the dark Poisson spot. I printed these on my new Creality K2 Plus 3D printer. Creality sponsored this video and sent me their new multicolor printer. And let me tell you, this thing is awesome. The printing bed is huge. The build volume is 350 by 350 by 350 millimeters. You can print anything you want in here. The K2 Plus combo comes equipped with the CFS multicolor printing system. It supports RFID filament recognition and can be expanded to hold up to four spools, enabling automatic switching of up to 16 rolls of various colored or water-soluble filaments. And for the first time, the extruder features a servo motor with an AI calibration camera enabling real-time dynamic control of heating, significantly reducing the risk of filament and jamming. Also, it's extremely quiet. The average noise of operation is only 48 decibels. It prints lightning fast with speeds up to 600 millimeters per second and accelerations up to 30,000 millimeters per second squared. Creality really made an amazing printer with this and it's reliable, fast and quiet and user friendly. You can print wirelessly from Creality Print anytime from your phone or desktop. If you wanna check out Creality's new multicolor printer, the K2 Plus, you can click the link in my description for a special deal. And thanks to Creality for sponsoring this video. And thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, remember to hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next time.